Uh, welcome to today's webcast. Today we will be discussing how endpoints are becoming increasingly more complex, which is fueling the gap between, between IT operations and security teams. Our guest speaker today is Ben Dixon. He is a security technical specialist with IBM who will be addressing how organizations are using unified platforms like IBM Big Fix to reduce security risks reduce CapEx, and increase operational efficiency. Uh, before I turn it over to Ben, though, I wanted to just take a few minutes and introduce uh, CBI. So CBI is a full-service IT risk management company. This is all we do. We don't dabble in anything else. We like to say security is in our DNA. It was started by Steve Baroni in 1991. Uh, Steve is still running the company, and he put a goal in place in 2013 that we want to grow 20 times by 2020, and I'm happy to say that we are ahead of that target today. Uh, we are a services and assessment-led company with solutions delivered by CBI employees. We have about 100 employees. 50% of those are in the consulting arena. Um, our solutions may include tools provided by best of breed partners that we select, like uh, we're featuring today IBM, but then also Symantec, HP, Veritas, FireEye, Fireman, Okta, SafeNet, Palo Alto. And in the space that we team with these partners, they complement versus compete with each other. We're a performance-based company with very talented people driven by customer satisfaction. To prove that point, our customer sat scores are proudly, proudly published on our website. So I want to go through what we do for a living, and, we, and I'm going to let this build out, but we proudly uh, call this or affectionately call this our fan inside of CBI, and this is what we do for a living. It's all color-coded, and I'll just go through what, what it means, and then hopefully at some point in time, if, if you want to engage with CBI, we can go through this in more depth. But the, the gray ball on the bottom, we look at this as our job, which is to help protect your most important assets, your data, your IP, your reputation, and your brand. The red is, is our methodology and how we engage with you as a customer. The uh, green is our assessment area, which uh, we want to understand your risk posture. And then the orange is areas where we can help you write your risk policies. And then most importantly, in the blue, whether it's data, application, endpoint network, or perimeter, these are risk areas that you're facing. And this is where we deliver our solutions through our, our best of breed partners. So with that, I want to turn it over to Ben Dixon. All right, well, thanks, Chuck. Um, as we said, we're going to be looking at uh, the really these three things today um, from an IBM uh, security perspective. The current state of the uh, endpoint environments, the risks to the endpoints, and how we close the gap. This, prob this slide probably contains one or more tasks on all of our job descriptions. Uh, some of us are tasked to protecting the network. Some of us are tasked to deploy software and applications. There are three, three themes on this slide, discovery, deployment, and automation. And those are three of the things that we have to be cognizant of as we go through, whether it's identifying the current state of the environment, whether it's identifying the risks, or taking action on those things. And this is how we accomplish what we're after. This is a big fix environment. Uh, it's got a, a lightweight, robust infrastructure. We have a, uh, a big fix server uh, located in the center that is the, the top of the tree. Uh, we have, it's, it's highly secure and highly scalable. Uh, we're able to aggregate data analysis and reports down from the cloud-based content delivery that you see here. Uh, it's, it, the, the, the features are uh, automatic and it's on demand that we have the content gets updated. We also have a single intelligent agent on all of our endpoints. And those endpoints could be a traditional computer in a remote office, 
or it could be a server in a data center. It could also be a laptop or even a mobile phone at the airport or a hotel or coffee shop. It does a continuous self-assessment and policy enforcement, which might be a little different from traditional uh, endpoint management techniques, which I'll talk about a little bit later, uh, because the, the, the process is that it continuously works in the background on the endpoint processing, uh, anal an analyzing the, the state of the endpoint and things that might need to be done to it, sort of an if-then, if you will. If this case exists, then we do this. The good part, the good side about that is that it has minimal system impact. It utilizes less than 2% of the CPU while it's, while it's processing these analyses and these policy templates in the background. And this the type of environment that I was talking about is a, is a good one because the complexity of security uh, has changed and it's got a lot of challenges in it. Just a little bit of history. Um, for over 50 years since we introduced the mainframe in the 70s, IBM has been committed to providing comprehensive security that meets all of the evolving technological needs. Last year, IBM Security Systems Division became an IBM business unit called IBM Security. And we've developed this maturity model to represent the set of controls that our customers need to provide basic and or more advanced security in each one of these domains. Each organization has different security requirements, obviously, based on industry regula regulations and how they're organized. Uh, risk levels, budgets, and overall strategy. But IBM can help identify these existing maturity levels, entry points based on current status, and develop a strategy to move to a higher level maturity in a given domain. For the purposes of today's discussion, we're going to be focusing on the domain in the top right, the network, mobile, and endpoint protection domain. And we can see that, you know, we're talking about endpoint and network security management, uh, application state awareness, securing our virtual environments, uh, and things like that. Historically, these two silos have acted independently, IT operations and security. Security traditionally was physical security, you know, who has access to the building or who has access to the server room. <clears throat> there really wasn't any need for overlap. But as we saw from the previous slide and over time, you know, we're no longer on the security side dealing with uh, physical security, building security. We're dealing with data security. We're dealing with protecting not only the front door, but the Internet door. We're trying to keep the bad guys out and keep the good stuff in. It's been relatively straightforward on the endpoint side to deal with discovery, make sure nobody brings a, an unauthorized computer to the office and plugs it into the network. We've been able to discover what the vulnerabilities are and patch those. We've been able to manage the life cycle of our endpoints. We know when a new computer gets ordered. We know what the triggers are to order a replacement for that computer when the life cycle uh, is up. And we've been able to comply with various uh, uh, regulations and standards, things that we didn't want on computers from software to uh, regulations that tell us that passwords have to be a certain length and things like that. But lately, we've had to combine that with protection from an external threat. We've had to continuously monitor because it's not just when our computer is on the network at work. We have to monitor it when it's on the counter at home. And we have to decide what kind of response we're going to take should uh, one of our endpoints computer, whether it's at the office, at the airport, or at home, whether it gets attacked and what kind of response that's going to entail. So what we've had to do is begrudgingly in some cases, <laughs> align these two silos a little bit more. And it's been a growing process, as I, and I'm, I'm sure that you know, people on the, on the call are, are familiar with the process and that you've probably gone through some of it yourselves. 
So let's look a little bit now at the risk on our endpoints. One of the problems with our endpoints, obviously, is interface complexity. Uh, we've got, uh, in some cases, we've got heavy resource-intensive agents. Uh, we've got things that take up a lot of processing power. It could be opening a large document. It could be printing a large document. It could be downloading a large file. Uh, we've got a lot of things that uh, traditionally uh, aren't uh, internet friendly from a corporate perspective when we look at managing our environment, managing our endpoints. So that can be a challenge as well. Uh, we can look at the fact that it's, uh, it, it traditionally takes, uh, if we break things up, patch management for one, uh, OS deployment, software distribution, it takes a lot of bodies uh, to maintain it. Uh, there are traditionally a long deployment schedule. It takes a long time to, uh, to, to deploy uh, an environment, get it up and running, uh, than it takes, then we have to maintain it as we go. And the upgrade process, um, you know, whenever, whenever we hear about an upgrade coming, normally people shudder because they just, you know, you'd, do any, you'd rather do anything than have to upgrade uh, management software. And we've got limitations we've seen in the past. Uh, we've got scan-based architecture where you take a, a scan, of, let's say, of an endpoint, and you have to upload it to a database. And you've got to wait for it to process, and then you've got to query the database to see what kind of information that you can get out of there so that you can find out not what's going on right now, but what happened a week ago when that particular endpoint was scanned. Limited coverage. I mean, if, if, we're, if we're dealing with things that are not necessarily internet friendly, then what happens if a computer is, uh, you know, off the wire? Let's say it's not VPN'd in, uh, it's out on the internet, it's in a hotel or it's in a coffee shop or something like that. Uh, it's, it's exposed and we don't have the management capability over it historically. And one of the, one of the features that, or one of the, the, the lack of features actually that people have seen in the past has been the fact that we can manage a few endpoints or a few hundred or maybe even a thousand or so, but scale past that. And, you know, we're the, the hardware required, the software required, and the cost required have just been astronomical and unmanageable. Now, Big Fix has been able to uh, accomplish some of those things, which we'll talk about in somewhat in detail in, in a couple of slides when we get into uh, patch management. But I want to look again at this, at this, uh, this break um, between, these two, between these two silos to figure out, you know, what is the need uh, to, to bring these together? Now, I know that's kind of a rhetorical question. It's, it's obvious. I mean, the slide kind of says we've got stuff going on on one side. We've got to be able to take action on it on the other side. But you know, the real need is something that we've coined at IBM called the attack chain. And it's, it's, think of it as kind of low tech. I mean, we're not trying to break in. We're not trying, we, I say the bad, I would say we, but the bad guy. It's not trying to break in. It's not trying to attack the front door. You know, it's looking for the, the weakest point of, of, of entry, whether it's, uh, an endpoint that somebody left at security, or whether it's a phone somebody lost, or whether it's a supplier that has access to a building. And so these things, it's, it's, it's easier for them to, and, and probably less expensive, uh, to seek out these, you know, these potentially low tech entry points, um, you know, and, 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 and attack that way and get, uh, get access to the environment. So if we look here, um, you know, security is traditionally responsible for compliance status, uh, creating security policies, what things should be, or publishing uh, existing regulations, um, you know, do this, this, this account can't be en enabled, this password has to be so many characters, and then using their tools that are sold in the quote-unquote security uh, environment 
to identify vulnerabilities. Well, the problem with that is that when you deal with a tool that's only looking at a security policy or a vulnerability, a lot of times it doesn't have any way to remediate. It doesn't have any way to apply a patch or a fix that's going to fix a vulnerability. Uh, it doesn't have a way, it, it can create a policy, but it can't implement it and it can't watch the environment to make sure that that policy stays implemented. And once it has, once you have identified a vulnerability, how do we, how do we remediate it? You know, sometimes that process can take a long time, weeks or sometimes even months. I mean, there are some organizations, believe it or not, that patch twice a year. And they do that because it's just an astronomical task and they, they don't have a process that gets them from the identifying the vulnerability to remediating it and being compliant. So let's look at uh, a little further about the, uh, the, the particular um, lack of visibility because if we're identifying vulnerabilities and we can't necessarily reach out and, and patch them right away, <clears throat> in this case we've got uh, an environment where a, a bank was compromised and millions of depositor records were stolen due to a missed server upgrade cycle. Now, I know that we probably all have at least one server or maybe more uh, where we've missed an upgrade cycle. Like I said, there's some organizations that I've come in contact with uh, in my 15 plus years of doing systems and endpoint management that patch once a quarter or twice a year. In some cases, they push out uh, CDs with all the patches on them once a quarter and they only check <laughs> once a year. So it's kind of a scary thing, and I'm going to leave the, uh, the, the names anonymous to protect the, the, uh, the, the, or, you know, protect the innocent or, or maybe not so innocent there. But the whole point of this is that we had a bank that was compromised because it missed an upgrade cycle. And the cost, which is something that I know we all see, or I know we all recognize the cost, uh, in this particular case, a bank, it's a little easier to see the dollars there, a $3.8 million cost of a data breach. The bottom line is that that line below it, you can't fix what you can't see. So if we have security doing the identification of the vulnerabilities and we have the IT operations trying to remediate as best they can, they come to the table a lot of times and one side says, well, I see these vulnerabilities. And the other side says, well, those vulnerabilities are fixed. And the other side says, no, they're not because I just saw them today. And so they go back and forth. It's not so much in those cases about fixing the vulnerability. It's more about who's right. And, you know, you can't fix what you can't see, but you also can't fix what you're not willing to fix. So how do we close the gap on this? Well, let's look again at these two stacks, at these two silos, and let's take um, a couple of considerations. Well, first of all, we know that to tackle the endpoint security problem, that all the departments have to be hands-on, and they have to be willing to work together, and they have to have shared visibility and control. So if I'm uh, doing discovery on one side, then the monitoring maybe that security is doing, it needs to interface with my discovery and my patching. Because what's the point in patching? I mean, this is obviously you do want to patch, but what's the point in, in identifying vulnerabilities and patching if you can't keep up with, okay, what's compliant? How am I doing so far? Uh, life cycle management. You know, there are a lot of steps in there. Deploying an operating system, deploying software, uh, deploying patches and all of those things. We have to be able to do that while still protecting the threat. In other words, we can't have an, uh, an operating system that we're, we're putting into an image and deploying on a computer that's six months out of date and is missing all kinds of patches because that's going to open up all kinds of vulnerability holes. And software compliance and usage, we have to be able to see what are our, our users using on their endpoints. Is it compliant? Are they things that we need? Are they things that we can get rid of? Are, you know, do they open up vulnerabilities? 
We have to have the shared visibility across the board that uh, that can show us that. Well, Big Fix monitors the security configuration and compliance of all the endpoints on a continuous basis. And we talked about that a little bit when we looked at the uh, the infrastructure model. Any endpoints that are found to be out of compliance can be automatically remediated and uh, brought back into the compliance, whether they're on or off the corporate network. Or they could be quarantined to prevent the spread of, let's say, malware or something like that. And by assuring, by ensuring all endpoints are configured per the security policies, the attack vectors are reduced, and it greatly reduces the uh, the, uh, the thwarting of uh, of network attacks or endpoint attacks. So let's look here at a specific uh, case and and get a little bit into the you know how how the big fix agent works, how the how the uh, the environment works. But we can see that we're going to discover and report on every endpoint. The traditional compliance, um, or I should say that uh, uh, the, tr the traditional compliance approach is that you've got a security team, we talked about this before, the security team develops uh, compliance policies and they run an assessment tool or tools against that policy. And then they forward findings to operations, and operations makes corrections as the workload allows, one item at a time, using different tools, maybe from security, maybe from somewhere else. And they have different answers to questions like, how many endpoints do I have? Uh, then the users make changes, as they do, uh, causing the endpoints to fall out of compliance again. And then you have to start the assessment all over again. Well, our compliance approach at IBM is the security and operations work together to formulate policies and service level agreements. And then operations implements the baseline, patches, configuration, antivirus, whatever it might be, <clears throat> across all endpoints in the organization. Policy compliance is continuously monitored. Remember the agent I said that was continually monitoring its policy templates and analyses. And it's continuously monitored and enforced, again, at that endpoint. And the changes are identified immediately. If something changes to standard, it's identified immediately. And it's reported back to the big fix server. And, and what that means is that the security team can instantly check on the current state of security and compliance any time. And the security and operations teams work together to continually strengthen security to adjust to evolving requirements. And so Big Fix is unique in that the endpoint agents are auto, or they automatically and continuously enforce policies such as patches, configurations, etc. And once the initial policy is applied, the Big Fix agent checks to ensure that the endpoint remains in compliance. If a patch or configuration is changed, Big Fix automatically and autonomously reapplies the policy, ensuring that the users or malware uh, can't compromise the endpoint policies. One of the things we have to be able to see this is a security compliance dashboard. And you can see uh, from, from this screenshot of the dashboard, uh, we've got, first of all, visibility. We've got visibility into a lot of things. We've got a compliance history. We've got a results history, computer groups, uh, we can see the number of computers that we have, the number of checks and things like that. We're able to interact with this because a lot of these are hot links and we can click on them and get uh, drill downs if needed into more specific information. We can also run and schedule reports to, get, to gather the information that we need to return. So the compliance dashboard gives us all of this information really at, at your fingertips to be able to uh, to assess, to analyze, to remediate, and to ensure that uh, that you remain in compliance. Here are some real-world examples of some of the, uh, and I'll, I'll just let you sort of uh, read over these, some real-world world examples of how some of our customers have benefited from using uh, the, the different uh, products within the uh, Big Fix Enterprise suite, uh, from Patch, 
uh, life cycle management, inventory management, uh, core protection, security compliance. Uh, one of the things that we like to look, we like to look, uh, talk about is right there in the middle of the slide you see under patch, where we have a 98.5% patch and update compliance rate. A lot of times, or many times, that is uh, that's a first pass compliance. Whereas we might be conditioned, or we might be used to seeing 80% compliance the first time around, and then we got to run it again and again and again. Uh, we look at something, we're 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 shocked if it's you know, less than 97% on the first pass. So just to recap, you know, we we've seen and we have many types of endpoints in organizations today. It might be servers, it might be workstations, it might be kiosks and mobile phones. Can't forget those because we're doing a lot of business on those these days. And the responsibility for all the tasks in managing this this security ecosystem uh, falls on multiple departments and gone are the days that one department can go do their job and never interact with another one. They've got to uh, they've got to talk and they've got to work together because the endpoints uh, that's a prime target for the breaches. That's the that's the uh, the the low tech the easy entry point for a lot of the breaches. And once you get in, you can have a big impact on the business. And so the next steps, as far as aligning the, you know, aligning the operations and security teams, we have to look at things like how are we going to discover? How are we going to decide what we're going to discover? How are we going to decide what we're going to patch and monitor it? You know, is, is, there, is there an audit that we need to do? Is there a compliance reporting that we need to do? And once we bring all of those things together, how are we going to manage them? And so those are all challenges that we've got to accomplish. And uh, IBM Big Fix um, is, is a product that can, can certainly accomplish that for you. And now I'll turn it, over, turn it back over to Chuck. Thank you very much for, uh, for your attention today. Hey, thanks, Ben. Uh, great discussion on how IBM Big Fix can uh, bring the operations team and the security teams together. Uh, we just have a couple more minutes, so if you have any questions, uh, Matt, if you can open up the lines, we'll take any questions or if there's any questions in the chat room. Yeah, we can go ahead. If you do have any questions, um, go ahead and use the chat function or the question um, function within the webinar software. Okay, Chuck, it doesn't look like we have any questions, but following this webinar, um, you'll be able to view this on demand on the website. Uh, if you do have any questions, you can get the information off there and reach out to one of our um, experts, or you can email us at webinars at cbihome.com. Thank you, uh, and that uh, concludes. Go ahead, Chuck. No, I was just going to say 